Welcome to a Besto TV production. If you enjoy our content, please click the subscribe button. To get notifications of new releases, ring that bell. Thank you, and away we go. here at New York Comic Con 2013 with creative director for Batman Arkham Origins, Eric Holmes. Could you take me a little bit through the uh, development of uh, Batman Arkham Origins? Yeah, I guess um, we started uh, over two years ago. Um, the studio at WBGM, we uh, started with the core of what was there from Arkham City. Uh, so building on all the great mechanics, uh, uh, the great technology behind, behind the scenes there, developed by Rocksteady. And, um, we, uh, we jumped ahead into the prequel space, so what we really wanted to do was tell a very important story for Batman, and so um, something that I hope stands shoulder to shoulder with those other games, and given how, how well they've been received and how passionate people are about them. So, um, yeah, we have a bunch of new features. We have a really, what I think is an important new story, and I'm, we're, we're so close to the launch, I'm really looking forward to what people are going to say about what it. What strands from uh, other Batman media have you taken from maybe the Batman uh, Dark Knight movies, from oh. Nolan, from Year One? There's, man, there's, there's so many manifestations of Batman these days. There's so many ways he's realized. But I think really the, the core inspiration for uh, the Arkham series is the comic books. That's really where it, it draws from most strongly. There's clearly connections with the animated series with some of the cast members carrying over, for example. But um, I think that the, the comic books are really the core. And, and probably the biggest inspiration for Origins is a comic book series called Legends of the Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Now, that came out a little while ago. Um, but the original version of that book, when it first turned up, was all about really formative stories for Batman, stuff where he would make mistakes, he would have to learn from those mistakes, he would have to grow as a, as a character and overcome the challenges he faced, rather than being this incredibly competent machine we see him being later in his career where he knows how, per, you know, how hard to hit someone to the nearest decimal point. Well, our guy hasn't learned those lessons yet. He hasn't really figured out exactly who he is or how to do everything he has to do. And so the opportunity for that in, in terms of the drama is we get to tell an important story for Batman as he learns really important lessons about himself, yeah. about the relationship with Gotham, about the characters that he meets. So um, yeah, I guess uh, that's something that we really try to bring to origin. What makes uh, Black Mask the lead villain, the great lead villain for the series? Well, something that's really interesting for us, I think, was, was trying to find someone who represented that turning point. Uh, there's a term coined by our executive producer when we were talking about the setting, saying, this game's kind of about the changing of the guard, right? Because in the early years of Batman's career, there is no crazy characters and costumes out there. There's the mob, there's organized crime, there's these families, the, the Falcones, the Maronis, there's, there's conventional crime out there. And, um, but you know, later in Batman's career, he's fighting this, 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 this recurring crew of more exotic metahumans. Arkham Asylum has to get open to deal with all these, yeah. these crazy people that are attracted to Gotham. So we're at this point where Black Mask really represents, he's got a foot in each world, right? Yeah, because he's, he's a mobster, he, owns this, he has this giant criminal enterprise. He's not afflicted with mental problems in, this, in a way that some of these other, perhaps more brilliant, but kind of uh, uh, problematic characters that have the, look, for example, you look at the Riddler, he, yeah. he, has to, uh, he has to leave clues that will lead people to track him down at the mm -hmm. end of every crime. We, in theory, he could get away with them if he didn't do that. But um, uh, so the Black Mask really represents being in both of those worlds. He's, yeah. he's, he's a criminal, he's a, he's a mobster, he's a mob boss, but he's also uh, got this one quirk, which is where he wears a mask and he forces all of his guys to wear yeah. these masks. So he, um, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's kind of a, that junction point between those two, those two realities. I've long waited for this moment. <laughs> With your death, I will find peace. Troy Baker, oh. AKA the Joker. So how did you go about preparing for this complex, difficult role? 
Um, you know, a lot of it, I think there's a 12-year-old kid in me that's been preparing this for his entire life, just waiting for the opportunity to. And fortunately, the guys at you know, Warner Brothers and, and within Warner Brothers Montreal, they, they gave me the shot. So there's a kid that's celebrating along with a 38-year-old man. What cues are you taking from, uh, have you looked at previous Joker performances? Or oh, you... of course. You know, and, and the Batman universe is something that's really near and dear to my heart. And, and again to the nerd in me as well. So, uh, and growing up, I mean, I used to race home to watch Batman the Animated Series 4.30 every afternoon. So Mark Hamill is my Joker. And it's a benefit to me that that's obviously the, the, the version of this Joker that we're pointing to within the Arkham Asylum, the Arkham City uh, game. So that's, that's obviously something we want to make f people feel like there's a through line within the characters in the story. What's his role in the story in regards to Batman? I mean, what, what's the relationship like? Well, as this is an origin story, we're going to see not only a more raw, uh, less foreign version of Batman, we're also going to see the same thing as the Joker. And people who know the Batman universe know that that relationship is something that's very integral to the story. So we clearly wanted to show the, the origin of that story as well. So he's, he's going to play a very significant role. Is there any pointing to his origin itself? Um, or is it mostly just the relationship, the back and forth? It's more about the relationship, yeah. Um, obviously, we're going to see things that, that are, are going to be something fresh for in perspective for, for Batman and Joker fans. So. What are you most excited about the game? About it coming out, man. This has been a long process, and you know, I, I work on it for this much amount of time, and then you have 150 people at Warner Brothers Montreal that work on it for this much time. So to be able to celebrate in something that, again, the kid in me uh, is rejoicing over, and to be a part of something you're going to geek out over later, that's that's the thing I'm most excited about. Eight assassins after your head. What are you going to do? I'm going to find Black Mask put an end to this. Roger Craig Smith, Mr. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank Can you. Can you do a little Batman? Uh, Alfred. That's all I'm going to give you. That's all we're, we're going to do. All right, we don't all want right. to do that. I don't so want you to me, see me so doing So tell me, how are you preparing for this role? How did you go about preparing for this role? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I, as far as preparing, I really didn't want to over-prepare for this sort of thing because most voiceover sessions, you, you get in and you've got a director and, and uh, the creative people that are involved with the game that want to they want to steer you in the direction they want this character to go. Um, so uh, Eric Holmes sent me a copy of uh, Batman when Batman Year One to kind of give me sort of a, an idea of like the tonal area that we wanted to explore with this version of, uh, of Batman. Um, but as far as preparing, it was more just kind of making sure that I stayed healthy so that I could work in that lower register. Uh, and, uh, and and then rely very heavily on the, the creative director and the voiceover director, Amanda Wyatt, to kind of have all those people who have a broader understanding of what they wanted from this, have them steer me where they wanted me to go. Uh, so there's not a lot of, I, I don't, you know, I, I went back and, and visited the Arkham series games and, and, and just to remind myself of the universe and the mechanics of it all, but not to sit there and say like, well, oh, I need to emulate this, 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 and this. It's like, no, okay, let's, let's see where they want to take this. Yeah, and truth be told, I can't. I, I mean, like everybody says, you know, those big shoes to fill, I yeah. can't fill those shoes. And, that, and, and why would you want someone to sit there and, and say like, well, just do what Kevin does? Yeah. Because then it's like, no, then go get Kevin. I mean, that's the man, that's the guy who yeah. does it. That's what we all know. So that's, that was the, sort of the, the blessing and the curse of this, is, uh, is stepping into this, this opportunity is to, to know full well that people are gonna think that I'm trying to be something, but it's like, no, we, we are just uh, presented with this amazing opportunity to, to portray a character that is so iconic and so loved by so many people, and uh, we do not want to mess it up. What uh, type of things about Batman does it appeal to you? Uh, at his core, he's just, in his mind, he just simply wants to do good. And, uh, and it, it's, an, it's a very interesting character for the fact that this is a guy who's going out, yes, he's, his motivation is, is maybe to avenge the, the death of his parents or to, to, to stop anybody else from harming anyone in that fashion. Um, but, but it's the fact that, uh, the, the interesting part to, to Batman to me is that, that he feels he's always doing the right thing uh, because the police department's corrupt, but of course if those, uh, Gordon's looking at him going, like, you're operating outside of the law, you're, you're a criminal yourself. Um, I don't know. It's it's that Boy Scout element of this is a guy who who was wronged pretty severely early on in his life, and he's making his sole motivation be that that this isn't going to happen to anybody else. Is that uh, is that idea that he you know may not always be right? You know he may be wrong. Is that going to come to play in this game and maybe in a sequel perhaps? Absolutely. Oh, I don't know about it. That's a crafty question there. Uh, I have no idea of, of a sequel, of course. Uh, and even if I did, I couldn't say. But um, no, uh, for sure. This this is a less refined and this is a rawer version of Batman. So we're trying to kind of explore those those times in his life when he wasn't 
uh, as uh, as uh, knowledgeable about who he is, what he stands for, what his approach is, and and it's a lot of you know it's a, it's an interesting area to kind of explore for the character. But yes, for sure, you're going to see him kind of wrestling with his own demons in a lot of ways. October 25th. Great day where I'll be standing in line and getting stopped, waiting for that game to come down. As will I. Watch Creative Continuity, Cartoons, Con Rewind, Mr. Lobo Does, and more on this channel. Creative Continuity, we bring the convention to you.